welcome to the tutorial for the Rio convertible bag by Uh Oh Creations. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and you find it helpful to make your bag. Happy stitching! Okay, I'm testing a new angle out for the camera, so this video tutorial may begin in this place and end up somewhere else, who knows, but I thought I'd see how I get on um, trying to film it at the, the way I'm looking at it, rather than on the side. So here we go. Um, a little overview of the pattern pieces. Um, I'm doing my pattern in my bag in vinyl with a woven cotton uh, main panel, centre panel, um, and with the panel pieces we've got two side panels and just a note to say that one has to be cut on the reverse so we have our pattern piece like that and then we turn it over and do the same. Um, so one on, on the top and one on reverse and um, we need to mark the top center of the center top piece and the top center of the back center piece like so so we need to do those jobs um, and also a uh, note to say the zipper facing we don't interface at all leave it as it is Otherwise, we interface all the woven fabrics and we're using fusible fleece rather than foam. So you don't have to add it to your vinyl um, if you're using vinyl, but the vinyl I'm using is quite um, firm and thin. If I was using one of the padded vinyls that you get that has like a felt backing or fleece backing, then I wouldn't. But the, because this is thin, I have ironed the fuse, uh, the fleece to them um, on a fairly low iron. So in places it has come off a little bit, but it's not a problem. Um, I can fuse it back on. I didn't want to be overheat because the vinyl could have melted. So that's the pattern pieces um, ready. I've got my hardware ready as well. I always like to get everything ready and together in a little tray so that... If I haven't got something, I know at the start. Um, so, without further ado, we shall begin the tutorial. And the first part we're going to be doing is constructing the straps. We start with the various straps and handles. We've got our two handle pieces, our ring anchor, two strap connectors, the strap support and the two straps that we've cut. And what we're going to do is first is the handle and you can either fold it depending on the fabric you're using. Um, I'm going to draw a line down the centre and as it's three and a half inches, uh, sorry three inches, I'm going to mark it uh, an inch and a half along there. And my famous double-sided tape that I love to use and as I won't be stitching along this section I use this tape which isn't really sewable it comes up the needle but it's stronger than the one that is sewable so when possible I do use this if I'm not going to be stitching on it so remove the backing a 
and then we just fold the edges into the center And then I put another line and you don't have to, you can use clips if you want to, um, this is my preference to use this. And we just bring the edges together. Got it out ready, but I like to use my roller just to give nice flat edges, and we're going to stitch along each edge. I'm going to also repeat for the other handle and I'll take them both to the machine, stitch along the edges and return. Here's the handles made um, and then what we need to do is we get the ring anchor and one of the strap connectors and we do exactly the same by drawing a line down the middle, folding into the centre and top stitching the edges. Um, the other strap connector we fold in and I've used double sided tape to keep it there but we don't stitch it and the strap support we also fold in to the centre um, but we don't stitch that either. So that's all the pieces ready there. And then we need to get the strap connectors and cut both of them, the one that's been stitched and the one that hasn't been stitched, in half. So they'll be two and a half inches long when we've finished. We'd like to check that they are all equal. <laughs> And that they are all two and a half inches long. Yeah, so all four of them are cutting half. And as I've not made this bag before, I'm just going to read what we need to do next and return. Okay, so we put those pieces that we've done so far aside and we need to do our straps now. And whether you're, you're doing um, a woven strap or a vinyl strap, we're doing the same thing. And what we need to do is have one strap right side up and horizontal and the other strap right side down vertically so that they're like that. And I'm just going to hold it together with a clip. Um, you can do it by eye if you want to, but I like accuracy. And when I'm doing a, a, a thin woven strap, I'll guess, but I'll take a chance. But on this, I want to be completely accurate. So I want to mark a line there which tells me where this strap part is, this corner, and we start at the top corner and mark down to the mark I've just made. So we draw a line, 
diagonally like that and we're going to stitch that line and then I'll come back and show you okay once you've stitched it open it up and it will look like that and it doesn't say to in the instructions but I always like to top stitch when I do this sort of thing on a strap it just looks neater um, and it's, it's something I prefer. You don't have to do it. it, it really is down to preferences. And then we trim the seam down to around quarter of an inch, both sides. Like so. So we've got one nice long strap and we need to fold the ends over and we want to fold them over by half an inch so I'm going to draw a line an inch in and we're doing both ends And I put some double sided tape just on the inside of the line. Fold the edge over to the line. You don't necessarily have to do this when you're using vinyl, but it does give a nicer edge to the strap than having raw ends. Okay, and now we need to draw a line along the centre, fold the edges in, and then, like we did with the handles, we fold them into the centre, and then we fold it again, and then top stitch. So I'm going to do all that and come back to you when I've done it. I've made the strap. Um, here it is finished. Very long strap, but it does need to be long. Um, I've stitched all the way round, and now we need to add a slider. And what I like to do before we add it is is see where I want my strap to end and then measure it yeah it's usually at uh, the four inch mark just to have plenty of room so I just draw a, a line with my white pen just so, to show me where I need to go and then put the strap through the slider So now I just want to measure where the rivets will go and I mark half an inch from the bottom edge and then half an inch from that mark. Okay. 
and then I get my twist punch. And go through both holes. And I only do one layer at a time. Because if I was to go through all the layers in one go, you could end up going through and coming out at an odd angle. So I always do one at a time. It's a bit I'm a bit cack handed because I'm doing this at an angle. Um I'm twisting to do this. It's not really comfortable um, by trying to show you. Yeah, all the way through. And now what I do is fold over to the white line. And I'll get my pen and mark the holes like that through. and then punch that layer. And this way you're sure to get the holes in the right place. Okay, and I get my rivets. And these are nine millimeter caps with nine millimeter posts. I get my green machine, which I cannot add rivets without it. I'm useless adding rivets with the hand setting tool. So if you can do it, hats off to you. <laughs> but I never got the hang of it. So that's the rivets added. And as you can see, they're nice and even on both sides because of uh, the way I do the holes. Now we get one of our um, swivel clasps and we need to put it down the other end of the strap and make sure that you're going to put it the right way up. You can't put it under that way. It's got to be the right side, which I'll show you. So I've put this in at the top and if we come along I want to bring it near so you can see. And the strap, make sure the strap doesn't twist as you go. And then you want to put it back up through the slider. So it's like that. And that's why it's important not to have it on the inside. And now I just want to push that through further. And now we want to add this through the second slider. Okay, so once we've got that ending, I had to go and read what we were doing next, <laughs> hence the pause. But we've got that ending, we go to the other end of the strap and put it through the next slider. And make sure it's equal to the other end, that you've got it the right way up. So you don't want to be folding it the other way. And then through 
the bottom and just just pull it through quite a lot now what I have done is because it would have been awkward to do it I've already marked the line and I've put the rivet holes in I've done all that ahead you saw how I did it so just do it the same way mark the four inch line and so on and then once we've put it through the slider we then put the last swivel clasp on and then I want to give plenty of room here put this in a big loop bring the slider uh, sorry bring the strap up through the slider again and then down over the center bar so that it's basically looks like that and I've got my holes to match up get my rivets I do hope I've been able to show you clearly enough and I haven't confused you. And then we want to So that's the rivets on. So I shall show you now that basically you've got two straps that look the same on the ends. It's just the loops are a different size, which we can adjust easily, she says. <laughs> so you just adjust the loops. And there they are, that's your strap completed, ready to add. So we put that aside and the next section we're going to be constructing the exterior front panel. We need to start constructing the exterior front uh, by getting the front centre panel, uh, the front panel. In the start of the video I did show you this is my front panel, um, but pretty fabric but a bit there. <laughs> didn't need it for me. So I embroidered this uh, fabric with a design by um, Creations at, by Cara, or Cara Creations. Do you know, I can't remember which way around it goes. Anyway, I will name it in the video description, so have a look um, there for the details, where I put all the links for various things. So, without further ado, we need to add our 11 inch number 5 zip to the panel, and the panel's right side up and the zip will be right side down and this is nine inches long and that's 11 inches long so you just need to overlap each end by an inch so what I do is lay it along the board and use that as a guide for adding the zip so that I get the equal uh, measurement. So I just lay the zip down. Like so. And just baste along there at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I basted the zip onto the panel. And now I've put some more double sided tape along the left side peel the backing off and then you need to get your lining panel 
front panel, which you've done on on the cut on the reverse to match up with the tiny little straight edge we've got there and the bottom piece. So you lay that face down. And we take it to the machine and we stitch at the full seam allowance of 3 8 of an inch. So I've sewn along 3 8 of an inch and then we fold both fabrics back away from the zip and press them away. So I'll do the lining first. And then turn over and do the same with the main panel. Just make sure that they've stayed. Okay, so we now top stitch uh, one eighth of an inch along there. So I've top stitched down the side, and now I never top stitch with the different colours of the background. Um, but because of the fact that we've got all the black and white, um, I thought I would this time for a change. Hope I don't need to regret it. So, without further ado, we now get the uh, centre lining piece and we lay the uh, completed panel on top, both right side up and we do it so that we want the zip to go along here like so and we stitch along the edge at one eighth of an inch seam allowance so I shall do that. Once you've basted the zip along there make sure your zipper pull is down past the top and you're going to base stitch around all three edges to match them up. So I've basted it all the way around and now we need to just trim up to make sure everything matches. So I just want to even everything up. There, and the bottom was fine. So that's all nice and even now. And we need to get our centre top piece. And we need to place this, not right side down. Um, we need to put the front centre piece right side up. And then we put this right side down along the top and stitch it at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So there it is, attached at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then we fold it up. If you've used a, a woven fabric, you can press it, but I haven't. I've used vinyl on this part, so I'm not going to... I'm just finger pressing it and then getting my roller. It doesn't make it perfectly flat, but it does help, trust me. And then I'm just going to top stitch along this part at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I've top stitched, I don't know if you can see there. And now we want to get the centre bottom piece. And we put that right side down. 
and stitch at three eighths of an inch seam allowance along the bottom. And once we've stitched that, we fold this down and top stitch along the edge there. So that's the front panel, the front centre constructed. And you should find that it matches the back piece the same. If it doesn't, then try matching it up so that it's going to be the same. Um, it, yeah, it matches apart from a tiny little bit here, so I'm going to sort that out. Literally, just just a tiny edge there. Um, and then we're going to come back to construct the back panel. Now we're now going to construct the back panel. So for this we need the back panel piece, the ring anchor, the strap support and the ring. And it needs to be an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. And I'm just going to turn it upside down because it's easier to mark. And from the top edge, which is the bottom edge at the moment that you're looking at, we need to draw a line that's one and a half inches down from the top. And we draw a line all the way across. And then we draw a second line two and a quarter inches down from the top edge. So that you end up with that. And then we get the ring anchor and we fold it in half with the ring inside. Like so. And we just need to base stitch across there. I'm not even going to pause filming while I do it. It's, it's going to be that quick. She says. So that's it, basted. I'm just going to snip the loose threads. And then we need to find the centre across on this bottom line that we drew. And just mark the centre spot. And then I'm going to do the same on this. Which is across here it's three and a half inches. And then on there it's three quarters of an inch. And I like to get my trusty double sided tape. Put it along the back like so just to keep it in place whilst we're stitching and I also do a second layer pull the backing off and line up Like so. And I'm going to just stitch across just to hold it in place 
before we put the um, the strap support back on or on should I say not back on so there we have it so she's attached to there again snip the loose threads and now we get the strap support that we made earlier that wasn't stitched and we need to place this along the top line like so so we will have excess and this way by placing oh, upside down as well by placing it along that line you're going to be covering all of this and again using my trusty double-sided tape I mean you could glue it um, if you want to there's not really a lot else you could use I mean you could just hold it in place and hope <laughs> So I've put that along there to hold that and I'm going to put some across here to go along the bottom part. So take the backing off of this part and off of here and then Before I really push that down, I want to make sure that there's equal distances on both sides. So, an inch and three, and an inch and four. So, that is slightly down. Because it's amazing how one eighth of an inch can look okay so that's even and we're going to stitch across the top and the bottom to stitch it down and then i'll return i've done two rows of top stitching and attached the back um i've also put a rivet on there to be honest it's more for aesthetics but it has caught the ring anchor in there and the next thing we need to do is the strap anchors and we want the strap anchors without top stitching and we want two of our little tiny d-rings mark a line an inch in from each edge and then what i've done is i've marked a line two inches from this side and marked a line so you've basically got half an inch excess you slip a d-ring into it and fold it over to this end meets the line and what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of double-sided tape to anchor that down which makes it easier just keeps it in place So, so that's that one. We get the other one and do exactly the same and make sure the folded side is on the inside, not the top. Press down and then we just need to place them like so along the edge. The reason why you haven't folded it fully down is it just reduces the bulk in the seam. But what we're going to do is stitch up to the top as close as we can get to the ring without it affecting our stitching across and down again. 
Now I have a lovely little foot, which I shall show you, for my Janome HD9, and it's my narrow foot. And this will actually allow me to go really close and then across. So if you have a very narrow foot, um, it would be good using it, or your zipper foot. Um, failing that, um, if this was really sticky vinyl, I'd use my Teflon zipper foot uh, to do it. So I'm going to stitch these in place and up the sides and then return. So there are the connectors added and stitched. Oops, there you go. Um, and next I'm going to be returning to construct the exterior. For constructing the exterior, we need the front panel that we've made and then two side pieces, um, the opposite to each other. And <clears throat> we need to put them face down like so. And we stitch at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and we stitch both sides and then when we open them up, we top stitch along here, making sure that we keep the seam in that place. So I'll go and do that and come back. Okay, so I've attached the two sides. And what I did was I stitched along there at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I opened it up and top stitched, making sure the seam was facing outwards or towards the outside, uh, outside edge, I beg your pardon, and did exactly the same on the other side. And I also trimmed the fleece out of the seam allowance on both sides, just to reduce the bulk. Uh, whether you've used fleece or foam, you need to do the same. And then the next part is to add the handle. So I've got one of my handles, and what we're going to do is place it um, on the top of the band here on the inside and we need to place it quarter of an inch past the edge so I'm just getting some double sided tape which I shall put on each side here just to keep the handle in place while we stitch it and remove the backing So I'm just going to trim that thread that keeps popping in the way. And then we want to go a quarter of an inch past the top. So I'm just going to put my ruler there to see where I'm placing it. Like that. And then bring, the, bring it round. So you're not crossing over like that, but you're bringing this round and we'll do the same. Go half an inch, uh, sorry, quarter of an inch, I beg your pardon, quarter of an inch past the end. And I shall just temporarily use a clip just to hold them there whilst we go to the machine. And I'm just going to stitch eighth of an inch seam allowance to the... So, to the top there. That's the front panel completed. She's looking good. And now we do exactly the same with the back. We get the back panel piece, the two side pieces and attach them exactly the same way. Um, so I'll do that and come back to you. I have done exactly the same with the back panel. I sewed them on with a three and eighth of an inch seam allowance. I trimmed the seams of the fleece and then I top stitched each side. 
then I added the straps in the same way, making sure that there was a quarter of an inch overhang. And then I base stitched them onto the top of the bag. And now the next part is to mark three quarters of an inch in from the edge on both sides. So that's where my three quarters of an inch line is. You probably can't see it because of the tape that I've put there. And then I've put some double-sided tape on the inside of those marks. And you get your remaining strap connectors that have the top stitching on. Fold them in half and add the remaining D-ring to one and base stitch along the bottom. And the other one add the clasp to and stitch along the bottom and I don't know if it makes a difference but I'm going to do exactly as shown in the diagram by adding the clasp if you're looking at it the right way up the clasp is going to go on the right side and the ring on the left side I'm just turning it just upside down for ease of seeing because we need to lay them with a half an inch overhang as we did with the handles. So so you want your line to be on the outside edge and and lay the clasp the ring down and this one is the clasp because they were upside down and again measuring half an inch over lay it next to the line like so and I'm just going to base stitch them to the panel so now we have two panels that look like this and it's now time to stitch the darts and we're stitching these with quarter of an inch seam allowance and what we do is just literally fold them together so that the edges are together and I'm just going to use a cloth oh, <laughs> to keep them together and we're going to stitch at quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way along to the top we're not going to the to the point we're actually going past it um, and we're going to do that with all four darts and I'll pop back so these are now our panels with the darts added and what we need to do now is put the panels right side together to stitch them together and the place to make sure they're joined first um, is this the seams you really must make sure that the seams line up I'm just going to stitch a snip of stitch that I saw then so to make sure this doesn't move I'm going to get my staple gun because it's so important that these seams are together for the finished look and I'm opening the seams up on the darts mm, no that was too far up I, I, I don't like to over Put the, the staple too far into the bag so I don't stitch on the staple so sometimes I just do it a little bit too high that's got it see it's still high um, but it's enough to anchor that there and then I'm going to clip everywhere else all the way around and then when I've done that I will stitch all the way around at three eighths of an inch seam allowance that's the panels uh, sewn together and you can see the distance between the staple and the sewing there's a 
large difference. That's why I stitch so close to the edge, uh, uh, staple so close to the edge, because I don't want to end up damaging my sh machine or breaking needles in the process of stitching. And as you can see, they come out very easily. Uh, I never leave them in. Oh, there's that one there. Um, I stapled at the seam as well, so that the they matched up at the seams and the darts. Um, and now what I'm going to do, before we trim to quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to remove the excess fleece. Um, it's easy to remove before we trim the panels down. Uh, so I shall do that, both sides, then trim to quarter of an inch, and that's the exterior ready, and, and it's onto the lining. Before we go on to the um, preparing the lining, I just wanted to show you that um, I trimmed the seam allowance around on the main panel, but near the top, I left it at the full three eighths of an inch, and then I glued it down so that when we go to top stitch and stitch it together as well, it's nice and flat rather than a quarter inch seam that wouldn't do either. So just open gradually decrease and increase on the other side so that you've still got three eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top so that's that part now I'll go on to do the lining now we're on to the lining and we're going to do the zip pocket to start with so what we need to do is get our two zip pocket panels which are nine inches by nine inches we lay the first one right side up I've jumped ahead a bit just to save the stopping and starting for you. So as I said, we lay it in, uh, face right side up. Doesn't matter which way because they're all nine inches. Then we lay the zip, the nine inch zip. I mean, I've done mine a bit over just to make sure it covers each end. And we need to lay the zip right side up also. And then I just stitched at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then I've got my second piece right side up. And I laid the zip like so, made sure the sides matched and stitched at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I opened it up and pressed the zip open so that you're looking at two wrong sides of the panels and the right side of the zip. And then I just made sure and pressed the creases in these and you're looking at the right side of the lining pocket pieces and the wrong side of the zip. So that piece is ready to go. And then you get your zipper facing. <clears throat> and what you need to draw, <coughs> excuse me, is an, <clears throat> an inch in and draw a line along the center. And then draw a line three quarters of an inch up from the edge, just and stop at an inch each end. And then turn it round, draw another line three quarters of an inch up from the edge and again stopping it an inch each end. So you end up with a seven inch long box and half an inch deep. And then I drew a line along the centre stopping half an inch each end and then mark my little V's so that you'll end up with a box that looks just like this. Once you've done that, find the centre point of the box and the centre point of your lining piece. Mine actually comes to one eighth and one eighth, so eight inches and um, one, literally seven eighths of an inch. So one eighth of an inch before so that's what you do so yours might be nine inch it could just slightly be different but i might find your halfway point then you get your ruler and measure two inches down from the top or just lay it two inches down from the top marking where you need to put the center points so the center points mark match up and then just put a pin to pin this facing in place. And I always like to put one 
along the centre to stop it from moving one way or the other so we don't have a, a wobbly line as such. Like so. And now we just stitch around the outer edge of the box that we've drawn. Right, apologies, I thought I pressed record and I went ahead and did the next steps and then the postman came and I pressed pause and that's when I realised I was pressing record. So I missed out this section filming, I do apologise, but basically what I did was once we sewed around the box, like so, um, we then had the line along the middle and I cut along the centre line to the V's, um, the tip of the V and then use my snippers to snip right to the very corners as far as I dare, don't cut the stitching. So you end up with a rectangular box that's got a line through the centre cut and the two V's cut out and then you press them open which I've done here and once you've pressed them open and again I apologise that I've not shown it but the postman is very good at coming at the worst possible time I've laid some double sided tape um, and people often ask me where do you get yours from now I get two types of tape and I buy them from a lovely lady on Facebook called Anne Foy who has a group called Bag Kits and Glitzy Bits. I will give a link to her group at the video description. And um, her tape is brilliant. I buy the non-branded, which she does at different widths. This is a three millimeter width. And would you believe for 33 meters, it's 35 pence. Crazy, eh? Um, as I say, she does different widths. I like the narrowest ones. I haven't tried the wider ones. <clears throat> I also, <coughs> excuse me, buy from her the Star Fix tape, which is made by Farben Mix. It's a German brand, 50 meters long. It's four meters, four millimeters wide, and it's a costly eight pound fifty. So you'd probably think, why would I buy this? And that's because it's very high tack. It's got, it's very strong. Once it's down, it, it it's great. So I do buy this still. However, I haven't tried the wider ones of these from Anne, which I do intend to do. I just don't find the 3mm one quite as sticky as the 4mm one of the Farben Mix. So, I still bought a couple of rolls from Anne recently, but then I bought 10 of these ones. I'm going to buy the wider ones from Anne to try out. Um, but I'll give a link to the Facebook group in the video description. So, she does ship abroad. So take a look, her customer service is brilliant. She's a lovely lady and she'll do whatever she can for you. So without further ado, um, we need to place our panel onto our zipper pocket. And now I like my zip to open from left to right. Depends on whether you're left, right-handed, etc. So make sure you've got your panels the way you want the zip to open. <clears throat> And I just like to peel off one side of the double-sided tape so that we don't get into a sticky mess. If you do both together, then you can end up having an issue. I put the zipper facing down because I'm oh no, up because I'm starting at the bottom one. Doesn't matter which way you do it, to be honest. And then I just like to make sure that I'm lining up the sides before I come down and then if I'm getting my big head in the way I apologize but I really like to make sure that I lay it down perfectly if I have a wonky zip I can't cope so it has to be really nice and straight And I really fiddle with it until it is. A 
Okay, and then I peel the tape off the other side. And do the same. like so. I'm happy with that. And now what we do is we just start with just stitching along the bottom, just the bottom, nothing else. I meant to say as well, make sure that the pocket piece looks like that. So you're only catching the bottom piece in. And once you've stitched along there, fold this down like so. And then take it to the machine and stitch up the side, along the top and down the side. Once you've done that, we'll come back. Okay, so I've stitched all the way around. Like so. Happy with that. And now we just need to stitch the sides. Do not stitch along the bottom because that will be for turning. So just stitch down the sides and I'm going to actually even this up so that the, the length's the same. And I'm going to jump ahead and just press these like so on both sides so that we've got a nice pressed edge for turning, uh, for stitching the seam closed later on. So that's the pocket done. I've sewn both edges at quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I've folded the edges over at the bottom to give a, a, a pressed hem as such so it'll be very easy just to stitch close later on. I've got a lovely big gap for turning the bag. So I'm actually going to pop a slip pocket onto the other side of the lining which is uh, additional to the pattern. I shall come back shortly and show you how to do that. Onto the slip pocket, um, I've cut a piece of fabric that's 16 and a half inches long and 10 and a half inches wide. If you're using directional or print fabric, it's very important that you do it this way and not that way. So, 16 and a half long, 10 and a half wide. You can make it smaller if you want to or slightly bigger if you want to, but this is a nice size for a double slip pocket. Um, and what we do is we bring the two right sides together to meet the edge and we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance down the side, a long stop, give three inches gap, carry on all the way up to the top. So I'm going to do that in return. Alright, so I've stitched down along, left a little gap and carried on. And I always double stitch at the corners. It just reinforces them. So when you're using your turning tool, uh, you've got less risk of pushing through. And before I do anything else, I just like to press this bottom seam open, uh, fold it over. Just It just makes it much easier for sewing closed in a little while. So that's all I've done, just that part for the opening. And then I trim the corners. Including the top parts, although they're not technically corners, but, well, I suppose they are in a way, but <laughs> not quite the same, I know. And if, for example, you did accidentally cut into the stitches or poke a hole when you've turned it, just turn it right back, wrong side out again and just stitch a small line just down, just shrink it a little bit. And it's not the end of the world. So we just pass it through to turn it right side out. And... whatever you use to turn your, or poke your corners out with, that's what we'll be doing 
next I've got a clover um, tracer pen which is perfect for the job <laughs> um, this is a tracer pen that you use when you're transferring a pattern using carbon paper um, but I don't tend to do that so much anymore because that was when I was dressmaking um, so yes yeah, a long time ago since I've been making bags I haven't I've made one dress <laughs> my granddaughter so that's that so as you can see we've already got that nicely turned and I just want to I pull this back and press the seams open just stops them if you look here if I stitch that now I'd have a rolled in hem um, but by doing this you're opening your seam up and I do it at the bottom and although you've ironed folds into it that's not that's fine because we're going to press them out now but we just like nice crisp edges and and if you don't do it then you've got a chance of having curved edges where the seams folded in on itself so it, it is worth doing that Okay, now we just want to top stitch along the folded edge. So I've top stitched along the top, and now what I've done is I've marked center points in each piece, <clears throat> both the lining panel piece and the uh, slip pocket. And the other way to do it, besides measuring it, as I showed you earlier, is just to fold them in half, press a crease, and then put your line. So that's just an alternative way. Um, and then we're putting it like we did with the zipper pocket and we're putting it two inches down from the top you're looking at it upside down at the moment and then I like to just pin it in four places now as you can see it's quite a deep slip pocket you don't have to make it that deep if you don't wish to. Um, I've literally got it almost the length of the bag, allowing for the curve, etc. So just want to check again that it's where it is, yes. I want to check that I've got the right distance, just over three and a half. Yeah. So I'm going to stitch all the way around and I'm going to stitch a line down the centre. To divide it into two pocket pieces and as we go round I'll be stitching over that hole okay so that's stitched and we've got two nice slip pockets you've got, you can get your hand in there easily plenty of room and uh, there you go probably could have been a bit shorter in all honesty but there's plenty of room <laughs> and now we need to mark for our snap magnetic snap so in doing it an inch and a half down from the top and mark the hole for the hole the centre sorry I beg your pardon and then we draw our lines for the holes that we need to do and I just get my craft knife, put it in, and draw the line. And I always like to use a bit of J June Taylor's fray block, um, just to stop these holes ever growing into ladders as such 
and then for the slip pocket I'm using the female side of the snap and push them out you can push them in or push them out whatever your preference is and then just turn my iron on I'm just going to do the other uh, side of the lining which I'd lost <laughs> and again an inch and a half down from the top I just want to check that that's exactly the same. So eight and three quarters of an inch, eight and three quarters of an inch. I'll get my other washer. And again, I want to check that's an inch and a half. Yes, I was. I wasn't sure then if I'd done the inch and a half. <laughs> and. block and the male part of the snap you can always tell the male part because that has the protruding part and the ladies one has or the female one <laughs> ladies the female one has the dip so Harder to press that one. Right. So there's that, and then I just get some spare fleece, fusible fleece, and just iron it over the metal snap. Just so that you can't feel it so much through the bag. And do it on both pieces. So it's ironed everywhere. So that's the magnetic snaps added. The next thing we need to do is to stitch the darts as we did on the external panels. Um, I also went ahead and added my label um, to my lining above the zip. Uh, so if you add labels, that's a good place to add it. And now um, we stitched the darts just as we did with the external, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I should do all four of these and come back. I've sewn the darts and then we place the panels right sides together and we just nestle the dart areas into each other. And as we did with the main panel, make sure that we line the seams of the darts up perfectly so that they look good. And once I've gone round and pinned it everywhere, the instructions do say to stitch at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way round. But I always like to stitch it slightly smaller so that it nestles into the bag better. So I start at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and by the time I get down to about an inch down, I move out to half an inch seam allowance all the way round. And then as we come to the other side, 
get towards an inch and move back to three eighths of an inch seam allowance. It just means that the lining can fit a little bit better into the main panel. So I'm going to do all that and come back. I stitched all the way around and I did the three eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top and then after about an inch I moved out to half an inch. And now I've trimmed the whole seam allowance and I've just started by, uh, we put the exterior right side out into the lining that's wrong side out and we have it so that the zip pockets at the back and the front of the bag is facing us and we literally I've I've um, clipped it with the seams against each other so that they're equal and I'm going to clip all the way around the edge making sure the handles are inside as is the little side pieces here and I'm going to stitch at three eighths of an inch three eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way around. There is another method that you could do if you don't like putting um, bags like this together and then turning them through uh, a little gap and so on you can do what they call a drop in lining which is where you um, fold over the tops of each of the back the panels the exterior and the lining and you fold them over and you glue them down or um, stick them down with double-sided tape and then you drop the lining right like it is now so it's wrong side out into the exterior bag with it being right side out so you drop it in and then you just very carefully line the tops up so they're all equal and then top stitch around. Um, it can be very good, but you've really got to be very, very accurate. Otherwise it can look quite awful if you don't have them lined up it's equally. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the television. I <laughs> don't know why it's got loud all of a sudden. Anyway, I'm going to go and stitch and come back. Bag stitched all the way around the top and I'm going to turn it right side out through the pocket and then um, I'll come back and show you about the top stitching. Okay so I've turned her right side out and we're left to close the pocket and now you can see the benefit of um, folding this over and pressing it earlier on because all I'm going to do is put some double sided tape in there just to hold it steady and then stitch across. Um, at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Push the pocket inside, make sure the lining's nice and snug in inside, um, and then I'll come back. So there we have it, the pocket's inside now, tucked away. And I would just like to say that normally, I've got a video that um, is on YouTube on how to do perfect top stitching. Um, because I haven't used foam in this bag, I can't apply that method so easily um, because it's fleece and I don't want to put pins in to put holes through the lining, uh, through the vinyl. So I'm just going to have to very carefully stitch it and make sure that as I'm stitching, the vinyl is rolled over so that the lining doesn't show like that. We want to tuck it over, roll it over slightly. So that it's like that. So I'm going to top stitch all the way around the top. Before I meant should have said, but before you stitch around to, to stitch the two panels together, make sure that you tuck the ring down out of the way and the same for top stitching. So that's all we've got to do, top stitch and then add the handles and the bag is done. So I shall be back shortly. I've top stitched the bag. But what I did, because it is vinyl, I didn't backstitch. What I do is I leave long threads and then I use my leather needles to send these top threads through to the back, tie them off and then slip, slip along inside to uh, hide the stitching. Or the threads, shall I say. I'm just going to do that and I shall come back. So there she is, all finished, top stitched. And the handle's on... Uh, as a backpack, a shoulder bag or a crossover body bag. 
simple tote bag. Lovely, isn't she? I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Till the next time. Bye.